What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I've got a $1,000 gaming PC build for you that just so happens to be all AMD. When I priced this up and configured it together, AMD turned out to be the best GPU and CPU option, which gets me excited. So let me explain and without any further ado, let's dive into it. This video is made possible by Squarespace. Build a beautiful website at the link in the description below. Now, when I say this system is all AMD, that's got to start off with the CPU, which is the heart of any gaming PC build. I went for the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. Uh, the base and boost clock speed are pretty decent, uh, but perhaps more importantly for me, 6 cores and 12 threads makes it a bit of a multi-threaded beast, uh, which more and more of the new titles are really going to take advantage of. I'm going to be mounting it onto this, which is the MSI B450 uh, Tomahawk Max. Now the Max lineup of motherboards from MSI are actually pretty special. You might not realise this, but you can't go out and just buy any B450 motherboard and expect it to work with these snazzy new Ryzen 3rd gen CPUs. MSI's Max lineup though come with the required BIOS that you're going to need for these chips, which is really, really handy. Installing an AMD CPU is simple, simply line up the triangle on the processor uh, with the triangle on your motherboard socket. Lift up that retention arm and drop the CPU into place. AMD what, use what they call, sorry, a zero insertion force socket, which means it's super easy and doesn't need any pressure, uh, unlike the Intel options. When it comes to the CPU cooler that we're gonna use for this build, you could arguably stick with the included AMD stock cooler. It isn't gonna thermal throttle your CPU, but it is gonna be quite a bit louder uh, than an alternative and also isn't going to allow any overclocking headroom. Instead, I went for the uh, Deepcool Gamax GT. It's one of my favourite RGB air coolers and sits at a really nice sub $40 budget price tag. Despite that budget price tag though, you get a really nice uh, heatsink alongside an RGB and also pretty quiet uh, pressure optimised Deepcool fan. You do need to consult the included manual that your CPU comes with, uh, but I lost it, so you can just Google it and find it online as well, uh, if that's easier. Um... With that being said though, I appear to have everything I need. And it should be a simple case of popping the back plate on, as I've just done, then grabbing some thermal then grabbing some thermal paste, sorry. A small blob around the size of a grain of rice will do. I've sort of made a bit of a mess of that though. It, it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to work. Um, oh dear. I'm only using Corsair stuff as well, by the way, because I have it to hand. Um, you might actually find that, that another, another solution is, is just as good. You'll see why in just a moment's time, but I'm going to leave the fan and the RGB cables and stuff over there for now to make our life a little bit easier. The final thing we're going to pop in while our motherboard assembly, as we're going to call it, uh, is not yet in the case, is this 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 RGB 3200 MHz memory. But Slow down, James, what do you mean by all of that? This is Adata's Spectrix D60G, and it's my favorite RGB RAM as far as aesthetics are concerned. And that's for one simple reason. It's got more RGB on it than pretty much anything else uh, on the market, at least by surface area. Installing memory is super easy. In this, in this case, uh, we're gonna select dim slots two and dim slots four, pull back the retention clips, line up the notch on the memory, with the notch on the motherboard, and even pressure to both sides, we'll install it without really any troubles at all. Ryzen is gonna like that nice, fast 3200 
megahertz memory speed, though third gen Ryzen isn't quite as fussed as the previous um, lineups of the AMD Ryzen CPU series, shall we say. Now that our motherboard, I'm only kidding, I'll, <laughs> I'll move this out of the way. Um, now that our motherboard uh, is ready to be installed into the case, we're gonna remove the two side panels first off. And this case here, by the way, is the XPG Invader. XPG is Adata's gaming brand, and fun fact, they now make cases, power supplies, CPU coolers, keyboards, mice, headsets, mouse pads. I mean, they just went mental at CES this year, and it's great to see the products finally come to fruition. Alongside the full tempered glass side panel, they've also got this kind of like airflowy kind of option. This is metal, by the way, which is Really, really good build quality. And this case here is super affordable, coming in at about $89. Before we install the motherboard, I'm actually gonna take out uh, this rear fan. With our case stripped back to a certain degree, we're gonna pop in our motherboard's rear IO shield. And then with all the necessary motherboard standoffs pre-installed for us nicely by, uh, by XPG, slot the motherboard in like so. The case has got a pretty handy uh, raised post in the very center, which will keep our motherboard nice and still while we go ahead and screw it in. It's not quite so much of an issue when the case is laid down flat, but if you have the case upright, it will stop the motherboard shifting about too much. Okay then, with our motherboard installed, we're gonna take off that magnetic kind of front panel I alluded to earlier, and that nice large dust filter that's gonna keep the air in the case uh, nice and dust free, and remove the front fan as well. Now the reason I've done this is because I'm gonna move both these fans to the top of the case and then use this snazzy showy off mount here to pop a couple of white Corsair LL RGB fans. Now, I must stress this is a completely optional thing to do. Uh, so you don't have to buy these for this build to work and it isn't gonna make airflow that much better. But trust me, it's gonna look so good and stop us having a load of empty void white space. Just wait and see. Now one really epic thing about these XPG like standard run of the mill case fans is that they have like um, a splitter built in which lets us power all the Corsair fans and the, uh, uh, the A data ones off one single header which is really really cool. Um, but I've just noticed I've installed one of these fans the uh, wrong way around so let me fix that. And before someone says something in the comments, the top intake does have a dust filter, so bringing in air from the top is gonna to be no problem at all. Now that the motherboard and everything is in the case, we're also gonna pop on our fan for our CPU cooler, which is gonna be a bit fiddly, but it will go on, trust me. Okay then, after admittedly a little bit of a faff, the CPU cooler fan is on which means it's time to move on to the graphics card. Now, talking of the graphics card, this one is a bit of a behemoth. So many of you have been asking me to use the AMD Radeon uh, 5700 XT, and here we are. A massive thank you to MSI uh, for lending me this unit to use in today's build. Now. I would recommend going for one of their slightly cheaper, more affordable coolers if you can find it, and that will help to keep today's build in budget. Uh, the cooler just up from the kind of reference design or the founder's design, as you'd call it, on Nvidia's cards is probably a good choice. And honestly, spending loads of extra money on a fancy cooler isn't really gonna gain you anything uh, in the way of performance and frame rate and that kind of thing. Yeah. Look at that.
Okay, so we have a very minor complication and I said I was determined to show more of these unseen bits of builds usually, but the graphics card is not quite gonna fit with this second fan down the bottom. So let's remove this for the minute. I may end up putting these out a la la, uh, I may end up putting these a la la RGB fans at the front, uh, or the top or the back yet, um, but we'll figure that out eventually. This card is, is, is a lot bigger than I'd anticipated. Well, that went well. <laughs> all right then, with the graphics card in, all the fans sorted out, and that front panel launched halfway across the studio, all that's left to do is install the power supply and the storage. Now, for storage, I opted for a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive, 7200 RPM, three and a half inch, and super affordable. It's not the quickest, but gives us a thousand gigs of capacity. For the SSD, I selected the ADATA uh, SU630. Uh, though for those of you in the US, I'll link down below the SU635. Um, this particular drive is a 240 gigabyte unit, uh, which is gonna be enough for our Windows boot up drive. And it's also super duper cheap, uh, with 3D NAND flash as well, which makes it super duper quick. In terms of the power supply, I went for the Cooler Master MWE 650 Gold. Now this 80 plus gold certified power supply is super efficient, giving you as much of that 650 watts as possible, and it's fully modular, meaning you only plug in the cables that you need. So, roll the time lapse. Okay then, with the power supply and storage installed and the bulk of our wiring all nicely finished off, all that's left to do is a bit of cable management and then turn this system on to see how it looks and performs. But first, a message from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. From blog websites, portfolios, online stores and more, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that lets you build a beautiful online presence. Fully responsive, completely customizable modern templates let you showcase what you or your business does best front and center. Great SEO tools make sure your website gets seen and full social media integration plants you firmly in the 21st century. The built-in commerce tools open the door for a world of selling possibilities with unlimited products, subscription support, multiple payment methods including Apple Pay and countless currencies, the possibilities really are endless. Head over to squarespace.com to learn more than I could possibly fit in a minute. And for your free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your beautiful site, head to squarespace.com slash the first link in the description below, to save 10% on your first website or domain. There really is no easier way to get up and running with a website for you or your business, with the all-in-one marketing, analytics, hosting domain, and website building tools from Squarespace. Moving on to the performance and benchmark section of today's video, I'm happy to report this system is no slouch. 1440p at high and ultra settings in some of the latest AAA titles such as Battlefield 5, Call of Duty's Black Ops 4, um, Forza Horizon 4 uh, is really where this graphics card excels particularly. But don't be surprised to see some impressive 4K gaming performance figures as well. One of the trade-offs of this machine is of course the lack of ray tracing functionality and while that may be a deal breaker for some, I suspect the vast majority of people at this kind of price point aren't going to be overly fussed. I think ray tracing really has its merits with a 2070 Super, 2080 Super uh, tiered graphics card, but at this $400 GPU price point, I don't think it's going to bother too many people. And when you haven't got ray tracing to contend with, you of course don't have that large performance hit and overhead that the technology sadly still has on a lot of the latest supporting AAA titles such as Battlefield 5 and of course the soon to be supported Minecraft. 
1440p at up to 100 FPS in the latest AAA titles, and 4K at 60 frames with uh, some of those settings admittedly turned down, anti-aliasing is a great one to gain some frame rate, and this system is really going to impress. On both the performance and the frame rate side of things. Finally, looking on to Rainbow Six Siege, uh, there's another game where this graphics card's going to work really well. Of course, that game doesn't support ray tracing, so it doesn't come into the equation. And it's a similar case when looking at GTA 5. 4K uh, really is where you're going to see the best performance in the Grand Theft Auto title. But with that being said, I think that pretty much covers all of the gaming performance and benchmarking bases. If you enjoyed today's video, a big old like rating would be much appreciated and make sure to get subscribed. Hit me up on these social media channels on your screen as well. And as always, we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.